This is the Rancor, one of the most legendary creatures from the Star Wars universe. But did you know it shows all the signs of a biological condition seen in this and this? Today, we're diving into the science behind the exceedingly short faces of some domestic animal breeds. This is something known as brachycephaly, but I'm also going to do something a little bit more special. You see, I spent the last few months teaching myself Blender so that I could reverse the effects of brachycephaly and show you what a wild, undomesticated version of this guy might actually look like. That's right, we're going to unpug the Rancor. Dr. Rex here. Welcome to the Scullywag Lab where I break down the bare bones basics of skull science. You know, of all the breeds of dogs out there, I'd have to say that pugs and bulldogs are easily some of the most recognizable. Their combination of short face with bulging eyeballs on either side of their nostrils and crooked misaligned teeth are quite different to the features of most other dogs. And for the same reasons, I reckon the Rancor is one of the most easily recognizable creatures in sci-fi. According to Star Wars lore, wild rancors were originally domesticated by the Night Sisters of Dathomir. But there seems to be fewer details on what the ancestors of a rancor might have looked like. So let's take a look at why the features of the rancor's face are sometimes seen in animal breeds, and what this might mean for predicting the appearance of an ancestral wild rancor. When an animal has a short face, but comes from a lineage where longer faces are the norm, it's called brachycephalic. In wild species, a shorter face can evolve for functional reasons, like increasing bite force for biting into harder foods or materials, for example. This is one kind of brachycephaly. There's also a size-related version, where smaller individuals within closely related species often have shorter faces. That's called craniofacial evolutionary allometry, or CREA. This allometric brachycephaly is tied to pedomorphism, where smaller species appear to retain juvenile features, and also seems to have some relationships with bite force across different sizes. So a small dog like a chihuahua might have a short face, but still functional jaws, aligned teeth, and zero breathing issues. And they sure aren't afraid to use those teeth either. But the kind of brachycephaly we see in pugs and bulldogs, as well as some breeds of goats and cats and ferrets, and even some birds, is uh, a little different. In extreme cases, the front of the skull is underdeveloped. The upper jaw is small and short, and the lower jaw kind of juts out underneath it. This is a condition called mandibular prognathism. Sure, this can create adorable little faces. I mean, just look at the face of this ferret, but it can also bring problems. Tooth and jaw misalignment can lead to feeding issues and excessive drooling. Reduced nasal passages can cause poor temperature control. Airway blockages mean limited ability to exercise and risk of respiratory disease. Shallow eye sockets result in bulging eyes, risk of ulcerations, or even eye prolapse. A shortened skull causes pressure on the brain and cerebrospinal fluid, possibly forcing the brain out of the skull itself. So nothing too serious, I guess. Dumb skulls. Anyway, what's the takeaway here? Well, with its extremely short face, laboured movements and excessive drool, not to mention its bulbous eyes and crooked teeth, the Rancor shows every external sign of this bulldog-type brachycephaly. So why does this pattern repeatedly arise in domesticated animal breeds? Well, the developmental story is complex, but here's some of what we know. The bones and joints of the face develop from special embryonic cells called the neural crest mesenchyme. Some molecules, like specific growth factors and something delightfully named Sonic the Hedgehog, influence the shape and outgrowth of the facial skeleton. One hypothesis is that artificial selection for tameness can lead to a reduction in the number or function of neural crest cells, which might limit development of the cartilage and associated tissues like bones. We see evidence of this in floppy ears, shorter snouts, and other characteristics of domesticated animals. This whole suite of traits is often called domestication syndrome, of which the super short faces of bulldogs and pugs are just a much more extreme case. This is of course all still up for debate, but ultimately, whatever the developmental causes, humans may have unknowingly selected for these features because baby-like faces with big eyes and short snouts trigger our instinct to protect and nurture. Selecting these features led to their persistence as specific characters of breeds, even though the same features are <laughs> pretty useless in the wild. You flea-bitten fur brain. And that brings us to the question at the center of this video. Was the Rancor that we saw in Return of the Jedi really bred for brutality? 
Or was it just a cuter, less capable version of a far more dangerous wild ancestor? In other words, was the Rancor just the pug of its species? Well, let's build one then and take a closer look at it. Looking at this fairly simple Rancor model, we can see a squished up snout from the heavily reduced development of the nasal region, bulging eyeballs on either side looking like they're being forced out of their sockets. The teeth are also irregular and misaligned, seeming to jut out randomly. It's textbook pathological brachycephaly, just like in a bulldog or a pug, or even a Persian. But just like in dogs and cats, it's unlikely that all breeds would have such short faces. Some breeds might be longer faced just like their ancestors. But perhaps more importantly, pugs, like all breeds of dogs, are descended from wolves, right? If this is the pug rancor, what would a wolf rancor have looked like? Well, the most obvious changes would simply involve expanding this nasal region forward, withdrawing the eyeballs further back into their orbits, and doing some simple orthodontics on the teeth for a more even spread and better occlusion. So let's do this. And this is what a wild ancient Rancor might have looked like. Even with just these tweaks, it looks completely different. But honestly, no more different than this to this. But there's possibly even more to this story, because many brachycephalic breeds also show signs of skeletal disorders like chondrodysplasia, which is a kind of cartilage development disorder that can affect limb length. So if a wild Rancor ancestor were free of all these developmental limitations, We'd expect longer limbs, stronger jaws, efficient breathing, faster movements, and better overall health. In fact, if we scaled things up proportionally, the wild Rancor ancestor would be about 50% larger. That wouldn't exactly make for a lovable dungeon pet. No, no. That's a pretty terrifying apex predator, capable of bringing down large prey, and less likely to be a typical hunter of relatively smaller prey, like humans or... Gamorian pig people. So maybe this all helps us understand why the Rancor's carer was so upset with the death of this beast in the movie. It wasn't a ferocious beast at all. It was just his sweet little pug being fed the only small soft prey it could eat with its relatively weak brachycephalic skull. Maybe it wasn't a monster at all, but just a domesticated and damaged echo of something far, far scarier. So, how about yourself? Can you think of any creatures from sci-fi or fantasy that show any obvious developmental or evolutionary patterns? Feel free to drop your ideas in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.